King of the road. What is going on guys and welcome back to another video. It is Saturday, it is 1.19 and at 2 o'clock I'm going to be heading over to the trails. Today's long run, one week out from my Backyard Ultra, is going to be more Backyard Ultra practice. So I'm going to be practicing the format, the timing, my pacing, I'm going to spend a few hours out on the trails and also by my car as my aid station to um, practice that rest period that I'm going to have as I do my 4.16 mile loops at the Backyard Ultra. So right now I'm just fueling up. I had a lunch and now I'm sipping on electrolytes. I'm going to have some G1M Sport by BPN in a few minutes just to get down some more liquid carbs and electrolytes and then I'm going to head out there nice and fueled smack dead in the middle of the day where it's very hot today and I'm gonna get after it for a few hours and talk to you guys about how I've been training for this Backyard Ultra. So let's get after this. So, I signed up for a Backyard Ultra a few weeks ago, and now it is one week out. I am one week out, and if you are not sure what a Backyard Ultra is, it is a race format that was created by Lazarus Lake, the same race director as the Barclays Marathon. Um, he put on a race which is now called Big Dogs Backyard Ultra. And it is this huge event now and done in so many different countries and all over. And it's, it's caught my interest and a reason why I signed up for it in preparation for my 100 miler at the end of the year. So the race format is pretty cool. You have, everyone starts at the start line and you have one hour to complete 4.16 mile loops. Um, and everybody starts back up at the top of the hour. So one hour to complete, 4.16. Everybody's starting at the same time. That means you're taking away speed. You know, 4.16 in one hour is, is very slow. As you can see, right now I'm hiking a little bit because I'm trying to practice that kind of pace that I'm gonna have. And the cool thing about it though is if you hold back, you will have more energy. You'll be able to put down more food. And there's a lot of benefits to having this kind of slower pace. So you can reach a limit that you didn't think you could a hundred miles or, or more. Um, so what I want to go over with you guys is how I have trained over the last four weeks for this race. This is my first backyard ultra. Uh, caught my interest about two years ago when I saw Courtney Dahlwalter and uh, Harvey Lewis do this race, Big Dogs, uh, Backyard Ultra. So now here I am in New Jersey's only Backyard Ultra. And yeah, I've been training for it and I wanna share what I've been doing. First thing I want to go over is practicing the format and practicing the pace and what fuel you're going to have in between the rounds, in between the yards. They're called yards. Laz named them yards. So each 4.16 loop is a yard. So you want to practice a yard. You know, if you have a trail around, find a 4.1 mile loop or something close to that. You can even do two miles and say you want to get two miles done in. 30 minutes so definitely just find somewhere you can practice this kind of format on both in the trails and on the roads for mine there is some elevation gain there's like 450 feet of climbing so i found both on the road and in the trail 
somewhere I can climb around 400 per yard. Within this format, there is going to be a lot of hiking, especially up hills, a lot of walking, slow jogging. You don't want to go too fast because especially for me, I don't want to rest too long. So I want to make it back with just a little time, just enough time to refuel, get my electrolytes, get my water, get my carbs, get all my fuel in and then change shoes if I have to and then go back out there, get ready for the top of the hour. So I want to practice on really just finding my groove out here, being able to hike and then run and then walk, you know, having an idea of what this pace is, is super important. And I think it could take you very far in this kind of race format. The second thing I did that I want to go over is running throughout the day. So whether this means running two to three times in one day or choosing a specific time, especially a time that you're not used to and run in that time period. So one thing, you know, I try to get take sleep um, more seriously. So the one thing I have not done was run in the middle of the night, but you know, I've done that before plenty of times and no, I have the mental capability when I get there that I'll be able to be just fine. But something I did was run in the middle of the day and then run in the evening. Two times I'm not used to running too much. Um, I feel really good when I run in the morning, especially when it's cooler. So I try not to run in the morning. It's kind of like a treat if I run in the morning. But running in the middle of the day, you know, with that heat, it has really helped me, you know, acclimate with the heat and also just train in some hard weather harsh weather um and then running at the end of the day you know my job has me on my feet all day i'm training clients and you know i'm working out so doing that already within itself i got like 15,000 steps at the end of the day and then got to run a certain amount of miles so i'm definitely tired so it helps with ultra training um, so number two is running throughout the day choose different times that you're not used to if you're not used to the night at all you know wait till it gets dark turn on that headlamp and get out there you know get used to running at night it'll definitely be beneficial when race day comes Whew, freaking working up this hill man it's definitely hard um, to talk and and work let's go almost done with this yard so I got six more minutes before I head back out there um, and having that scoop of G1M Sport and then half of this Bobo bar, about 180 calories there plus 160 so it's like 340 that'll be good and it's back out on the trail number three i wanted to talk about and i include this in all of my how i train videos but strength training and something i did a little different for this block and for this race is i made my strength training pretty much just body weight training so been doing a lot of pull-ups push-ups body weight squats single leg squats box step ups um lunges all of that primarily body weight um with some kettlebells and dumbbells included but this has given my body more of a chance to rest as i've been lifting weights for a long time now and my joints feel good um i had some shin pain that's gone i think that really helped like my body heal by going into a body weight so for anyone out there who's you know training a lot doing a lot of lifting and running every now and then you should consider you know deloading taking a step back maybe for a few weeks um, with some light weight or just strictly body weight and you'll feel a lot better and that's if you are also prioritizing your running i should say you know trying to ramp up that running volume and hours on your feet you can come back from the gym and cut back 
and still maintain muscle and you know stay lighter on your feet when you're out there on the trail and that's why I did it is because I feel lighter I feel better I feel like I can endure more miles It's two yards done um, and I wanted to talk about number four and it's a pretty simple one that we should all be doing and it's controlling the controllable so you know that goes with recovery and making sure you're getting at least eight hours seven to eight hours of sleep you're eating mostly nutritious foods um, you know you're doing some mobility work you're doing work outside of strength training that will help with recovery um, yeah, so it's really big to implement that. And for me, um, focusing on what I can control uh, always helps me going into a race. Going into this one, could I have done a better job? Yes, I think I have I always could do better. Um, but I've been so dialed in on the mileage and the training that, you know, I fell off of the recovery aspect. But, you know, that doesn't mean I don't, advise you guys to definitely focus on recovery um, it's something I've done very a very good job in before and it's helped me a lot um, so making sure the next few days I am strictly focusing on recovering up until race day and I should be good to go uh, probably gonna do another yard or two and then call it a day uh, so some good training in like I said I'm a week out so I don't want to overdo it. I'm definitely going to get a little ro road run in tomorrow. Um, that is the other thing with this backyard training. It's been on both road and trails, which I've really liked this hybrid method of running on road and trails. Uh, recently, I've just been strictly running on trails. So it's been good to switch it up, get out on the roads, um, pick up some speed under my feet. Um, even though it is a slower race, I definitely still worked on some speed work. So that was really nice and I'm happy with this build up going into this race um, so yeah that just about does it I just wanted to tell you guys how I trained for this race I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll definitely see you guys in the next video if you liked it smash that like button and subscribe if you are not yet subscribed I'll see you in the next one peace mm -hmm.